Praise God. I'm Pastor Ray Smith of the House of Prayer Ministries, Pastor of the House of Prayer Ministries, where Father God is glorified, where Jesus Christ is Lord and Holy Spirit is welcome. We want to welcome those in the audience and those in the congregation. Amen, amen, and amen. We're going to go ahead and get started. You know, we've had some wonderful, God has blessed us, amen. I know that song was going forth about breaking chains and curses, those like that, things like that. So many people have chains and curses, but we thank God that we are free. God has made us free. Amen. And we're enjoying the benefits of his, of the cross. Amen. Are we not? Now, before we even get into a title, and again, I welcome you on the internet audience, welcome visitors. We welcome you here today because God is here. Amen. Now, I have a goal. Amen. I have a goal that the people in this church and the people who are connected to this church can have the best of God. Amen. Amen. Everything that he's provided, everything he died for, you can have his best. You can have the best marriages. You can have his health, the best businesses, whatever you, if you have a ministry, uh, whatever your endeavors are, your children, you know, your family, you can have his best. That you can soar in him in every area that he um has died for because he died for. He said that he came to give us life and give it more abundantly. So there's no area in your life that he cannot bless. And it's my goal that you enter into his best, that when they see a person in House of Prayer Ministries, they say, wow, that person knows God. That person has received from God. That You know, when Jesus walked in this earth, he said, wow, teach us how to pray. Because every time he prayed, amen, something happened. Teach me how to pray. They wanted to be around him, amen. They wanted to bring their relatives, their sick relatives, their demon-possessed relatives to Jesus. Why? Because of who he was and who he represented. You know, Nicodemus said, you must be a man of God because you could not do these works. Amen. And so I pray that the same things are said about the people in this church, that you must be a man of God. You must be a woman of God. Your children, they must be children of God because of things that are happening in your life. Now, do you believe it can happen to you? Yes. Amen. And I'm going to sit, like I said, it's my goal, but it's not just my goal. It's God's will. Amen. Yes. Let's stand together and pray. Do you believe it can happen? Yes, sir. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you for all the wonderful things you're doing. Lead us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Now, we're going to take you on a journey, and we're going to go step by step. We're going to take it slow so everybody can understand. Amen. All right. If you would like a title, the title will be the working of his word. Amen. Glory to God. Now, like I said, we're going to take it slowly through some examples. Now, let's see if you have a job to get done. Now, you know, us men, we do more physical stuff. And the ladies, base, they do some physical stuff too. But basically, the men do physical stuff. The women do more stuff like in the kitchen or baking. I know they still do other stuff too, but just for this analogy, okay? So like when I was a boy, I want to build something. But even as a man, you know, you know, you want, let's say I want to, um, I want to build something. I have two pieces of wood, all right? And I want to, I got a nail and I want to attach something to the piece of wood. So, you know, well, it's just a nail. Let me get my shoe, all right? And drive that nail into that board, you know? Or mm, maybe I can get a brick and drive that nail into a board, all right? And, you know, they say, well, it's not working too well. So I got to find a hammer. I got to find a hammer because I know a hammer will really work. So if I don't have a hammer, I got to go and buy a hammer, right? And then I use that hammer, and guess what? It works better than the shoe. It works better than a brick or something else hard. I don't know if any of you are experienced because sometimes you want to do it quick and let me just get what I got right in front of me. But no, I need to take the time to find the hammer because that's what's going to work. OK, so anyway, but, well, you know, as you do. it, depending what you're nailing, like two pieces of wood. OK, I'm going to go slow. If you're nailing two. Sometimes I found out, really, I need to screw. Because screws, if you screw something in, then it gives you, it's, it's more sturdy. 
If you just nail it in, it's looser. So I need to screw it in. So guess what? Okay, I want to screw this in. I want to get me a screwdriver and screw it in. And man, I can do it, but it's work. Anybody else screwed something in? You men, have y'all done that? Ladies too? It takes some work, don't it? Boy, whoo. I mean, whoo. Anyway, so I said, well, you know what? I need to buy a drill. It's going to cost me something, but it's going to save me a lot of time and effort. All right? And you know, guys, you know, some drills are more powerful than other drills. You know, you really need to invest in a good drill because if you keep drill, it can cause more problems than not, you know, or won't last it long. So get yourself a good drill. And so now you can drill it zoop, just like that. You know, and it's good to go. Amen. Praise God. Now, for you ladies, now I know this is a new day and maybe you're not baking cakes or anything like this, but just for the example, you know, I watched my mother cook and I watched her use a lot of things that they probably don't use it now. But let's say if you're baking a cake and you're mixing the ingredients in a bowl, you can mix it and mix it and mix it and mix it and mix it, right? Oh, wow. It may take some effort to really get that batter in mixed all the way good, right? But you can get it done that way. You know, and the little girls watching the mom do it. But as time goes on, they had these little things that um, you could just spin. Still use your hands, but they spin and it misses a little bit better. But as time went on, they had electric mixers and you can just put it in and then it can just go. So the electric mixers are better than you just stirring and stirring and stirring and stirring. All right. Now, key. Let's say, remember you have the little girl who's washing them all. Mom, I want to do it. I want to do it. You know, she may let her mix it with the hand. But Mom, I'm tired. It takes a lot. Well, I'll finish it, little. I'll finish it, baby. I'll finish it. But she say, Mom, I see you got a mixer, an electric mixer now. Can I do it? She say, no. Why can't she? You're not big enough yet. This is dangerous. The same example with... Um, a father and a son, depending on the age of the son, uh, you cannot, you can't use this drill just yet. You're not big enough yet. You gotta, you know, and even at that, even when you're big enough, I still need to teach you some things, right? See, we're talking about the working of God's word. I want to tell you something, if you can believe it. Do you know that God's word always works? Do you know his word never fails? It has never failed in the history of man. His word has never failed one time. Amen? Say this with me. God's word, God's word never, fails. never fails. God's word, God's word never, fails. never fails. God's word, God's word always, works. always works. God's word Always works. Always works. Now we're going to pray together. God, just read it for me. God, God in, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, teach me teach how, to how to use your word. God, God in, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, teach me, teach me how, to how to use your word. In Jesus' name, in Jesus again, name. amen. Guess what? He's going to teach you how to use his word. Praise God. Why? Because the word always works. Always works. Now, let's go to Isaiah 40, verse 8. Remember, and as we turn to these scriptures, remember the little boy, right? You know, and it's even like this. Let's say a businessman, he's been in the city all his life. Now he moves to the country and then he wants to do some work and he feels like he's just not, uh, he don't want to really get into it. So what would he do? He hire a mechanic or hire someone to build a house or to build a shed or put something together. He just hire someone, right? And see what happens is this. When you don't know how to operate the word correctly, because God's going to show you how to do this. What do you do? You go to your pastor. You go to your mom, you go to your father, because your father's been saved a long time. He knows the word. Your mom's been praying for years. She knows the word. So you go to them to pray for you. You go to them to use the word. You go to your pastor, and the pastor prays for you, because supposedly they're more skilled in the word. Amen? But that should be a temporary situation until you grow enough that you can pray and use the word for yourself. 
and get the same results. Amen. We fathers, we don't want our sons always coming to us. You know, look, you could do, you know, you're 16 now, you're 17 now, you know, you can change your tire yourself, right? You know, you're 16, you're 17 now, you know, you can put this together yourself. I've taught you, you're big enough now. But so sad is the saints have been saved 20 and 30 years and still don't know how to operate the word of God. Isaiah 40, verse 8. The word, it never, it always works. It never fails. Okay, Isaiah 40, verse 8 says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. It shall always stand. You know, the word of God is always valid. You know, it just, you know, some days, some things are outdated. The word of God is never outdated. Amen. It always works. Amen. So in other words, you know, like we talked about a hammer, you know, you can talk about a hammer, you can talk about, uh, or you can talk about something, you can, a screwdriver, or you can, uh, or you can use a, um, a drill, you know. When you use the word of God, there's nothing higher. You're always using the best. Amen? Okay, now, the word of God will not fail. Isaiah 34, 16. See, we got to get this in our hearts and our minds that the word of God will never fail. Isaiah 34, 16, it says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, No, one of these shall fail. None shall want her mates, for my mouth has commanded and his spirit hath gathered them. All right? So this is a way of saying this. The word will never fail. Never. Never. Let's say it together. Never. Amen. It will never fail. Isaiah 55, 11. And we're going somewhere this morning. Isaiah 55, 11. Let's turn there. Wow. This message will change your life. No. Isaiah 55, 11. This reads, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, it, but it shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. You know, we spend our time doing so many things. You know, don't we want to spend our time in something that works? Amen. Well, use the word of God because it works. It won't return void. It will always prosper. Amen. But God is going to show you how the word works. Amen. All right. Matthew 26, 4, to Matthew 26, 54. You'll go to the New Testament now. This is a meat and potatoes type of message. You know what I mean? All right. All right. Matthew 26, 54. But how shall the end of scriptures be fulfilled? Thus it must be. See, God says the scriptures must be fulfilled. They must be. God has placed his hand on the word in such a way. He's standing behind his word. It must be fulfilled. He's going to make it work. God, his word he's spoken, he's standing upon it. He's going to make it work. It will never fail. We have to get that his word will never fail. Never. Amen. Now, we're going to talk about you and me, okay? Because we're going to talk about who works the word, all right? We talk about the word that never fails, right? But now, I want to be a part of it. You want to be a part of it. We want to work this word that never fails. We want that hammer, all right? We want that uh, drill. We want this mechanism that's always going to work, okay? All right, now. Even before we start there, remember, and you're going to see this as we read the scriptures. Remember this, uh, the father and the son. The, the son wants to use that brand new drill. It's so beautiful. It's so nice. And dad does it so great. It sounds good. Zip, zip, zip. Look so much more. Zip, 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 zip. And look what dad has built. I want to do it too. You know? And so he walks up to dad and says, dad, I want to do it too. I want to do it too. Well, I'll teach you when it's, when it's time. All right? And God will teach us. Amen. But guess what? 
you know, what's if somebody off the street came? You know, the man's working his garage. Somebody on the street just walking by. He sees him in the garage. Oh, hey, man, look, can I use that drill? Hey, man, I want to do it too. Can I? What's the father want to say? You don't say no. This is my drill. I don't even know who you are. You can't use my drill. You know, his son can use the drill at the right time. He's going to teach him. But this person, I don't know him. I don't have no relationship. Guess what? Remember, we're talking about the workers of the word. This is so important. Amen. The workers of the word have to be what? And they have to be family. In other words, you have to be a believer to use the word. Amen. Sinners cannot use the word of God. God has presented his word at least to be used. Amen. For his believers. But guess what? If you are a believer, let's say put it this way. Let's have a drill, right? And you forget, you didn't realize it, but the drill is not working. We didn't realize that it, um, and we're talking this electric drill. Uh, it came, it came out from the outlet. I got to plug it back in. See, the drill needs to be attached to electricity. Guess what? The believers need to what? Believe. Not just to be a believer in they. Believers need to believe. If the believers believe, then they can use the word of God. But the believers just believers. But they don't believe the word. They don't believe the word is going to work. They don't believe the word is going to work for them. Well, then it's word going to work for them because they don't believe. You have to be an active believer. Amen? Amen? And we're talking about the workers of the word. You have to be a believer. You have to be an active believer that you believe. It makes such sense, doesn't it? Now, all right. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. Pastor Alice, can you read that, please? Now, this is a message that it could be something like an encyclopedia of how you how the word works. There are so many scriptures we could have used, but if you stick with these, these can be foundational for you. That now you can have a change in your life as far as the word working for you. Now, First Thessalonians chapter two, verse thirteen, Pastor Ellis. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse thirteen. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when we received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Amen. So guess what? This word worked. Why? Because they believed. How many times... You don't believe the word's going to work for you. You can believe it when a preacher preaches it. You can believe it for your friend. You can believe when it's an evangelist. You can believe it's a television person. But when you use it, do you believe that it's going to work? Or when you hear the word of God preached to you, do you believe that you can use the word of God and it can work for you? So many Christians don't believe it. They don't believe it'll work for them. They believe you have to be somebody special. You have to be a pastor. You have to be somebody in the Bible like Paul or Elijah or something like that, especially for something big, you know, what they may consider big. But it says here, all right, it says, which effectually worketh also in you that what? Believe. The believers need to what? Believe. Amen. All right. James chapter one, verse eight. Excuse me. James chapter one. And we'll go verses five through eight. Let's turn there. James chapter 1, verse 5, verse 8. It reads, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavereth like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and toss. For let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is a stable in all his ways. So guess what? You believe it in one minute, you believe it, the next minute you don't. You believe it another minute, next minute you don't. You say, okay, I just heard it from God. Now I believe what the God, I believe what the man of God said. Now I want to go out and use the word of God. Then you step out of church, you get a telephone call and say, look, and that telephone call just kills your faith. Just kills your faith. And now you have no faith. But then you know. 
20 minutes later, you know, brother in the church said, do you hear the word of God? You know, that word of God was for me. It was for you. Now your faith is built up again. And then you can say, oh, my faith is good again. Now you run down the road a minute and then you go to go get something to eat and you hear people talking. Well, on the news, so you hear what happened on the news and then your faith is down again. See, you, your faith is up and down, up and down, up and down. You know, you hear somebody, you hear a report, your feelings, your own experiences when you think you didn't get it or whatever, you're up and down. And how is that man going to get anything? One minute he believes, man, and then he doesn't. And it says here, that man shouldn't think he's going to get anything because he's unstable. So how is this man going to use the word? Okay. Take the stone, all right? Because the stone is not built up yet in his faith, all right? So the son wants to use his drill, right? Dad, I want to use this drill. He has his little hands here on the screw, his big drill. like He's shaking. He can't even keep it straight because you don't have the strength yet, okay? So he's unstable using his equipment. How can he use it? The equipment will work, but he's unstable. He doesn't have the strength. You know, that fair person's faith is not built up yet, amen, to use the word of God. See, your faith has to be built up where you can believe all the way through. See, in other words, you believe when that person says something. You believe when that telephone call comes. You believe when you go to the um, go to the restaurant and hear bad news. You believe all the way through. You're strong in your faith. You're not unwavering. Amen. And that's something a that father teaches a son. Don't Hey, don't let them bother you. Don't believe what they tell you. Believe what I tell you. Amen. That's what God is saying to you. Stop listening to people who do not have faith. When I tell you something, believe it, because it always works. Don't be unwavering. Don't be tossed like the wind. What is the wind? The wind is what people say. The wind is circumstances. The wind is, you know, just stuff that comes up, that comes against your faith. Demons, you know, they're going to try to operate and steal the word out of your heart. Don't let them do it. Hebrews chapter 5, we're talking about those who work the word right now. Amen? You want to work the word. I want to work the word. Amen? We cannot be unstable. Hebrews 5.13. It says here, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. He is a babe. Amen? Just like the father, going back to the father again. You know, he's not going to let his son handle certain equipment. Some equipment he can handle. Because maybe for children, you know, maybe I give them a little play hammer, you know, or play drill. Amen. So at the right time, he can handle the right things, but he's a babe. But when he grows up and he's stronger, he can handle the materials. He can handle the equipment and be safe. Amen. But see, even Christians, all right, if you can't handle the true meat of the word, you are a babe in Christ. God wants you to be able to use the word of God. Amen. So we have to grow up. We have to grow up, don't we? We just can't be unstable. You know, somebody says, oh, you know, this person said something to me. Now I'm upset. Or this person didn't say, hey, something to me. And now I'm upset. Or I didn't get what I wanted to when I wanted to get it. Or this didn't happen when I wanted to happen or whatever. Or I just don't feel like, hey, what are you talking about? You don't go by your feelings. You go by what God said. We got to grow up. Amen. So we can handle the word of God. First John chapter 5. And this is the last scripture we're talking about, the workers, okay? But we're going deeper, okay? We are going deeper. First John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. And we've used this a lot. You probably know this by heart. It says, First John chapter 5, verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that we ask anything according to his will. He hears us. And we know that if he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know we have the petitions that we desire of him. So the word that we work, the word, you know, and we're going to go into this a little bit. His word is his will. Amen. So if you ask according to his will, you know, then it's going to work. But if we're using the word of God, oh, look, hey, you know, the Bible says if I ask in Jesus' name, you know, the Father will do it. Just ask, I ask in Jesus' name. So this young man, he's 25. He sees his model on TV and he says, look, 
I'm going to pray in Jesus' name that that's going to be my wife. All right? Now, this man, he just sees her face. He doesn't know anything about her. He doesn't know what she believes in. He doesn't know her character. He doesn't know anything about her. But he just said, I'm just going to use the word of God. Amen. So that would be because I know the word of God always works. Amen. We have to understand something. You have to operate the word of God in what? His will. Amen. Glory to God. In his will. What the son said, okay, look, dad won't let me use the drill. I don't know why he won't let me use the drill. He knew I'm ready. He knew I can do it. Guess what? Dad is up there with mom, you know, watching TV. I'm going to sneak out to the shed and use the drill, okay? He doesn't have dad's permission, all right? But he wants to put together something, a toy, and he can do this together, do this, do this, do this, and do that. But look, is it going to work? No, it's not going to work because he didn't have his father's permission. It wasn't his father's will, amen? We have to operate the word in what? His will, Amen? We don't go do what we want to do with the word of God. No, we operate the word of God in his will. And see, this is accomplished. When we ask according to his will, his word, that is accomplished. We know we got the petitions. Remember when we heard, read the song? I know I got it. I know I got it. I know I got it. Why? Because it was his will. So I got something according to his will. It worked. We have to be mature. In other words, we can say, I want this, I want that, I want this. No, we have to get in with God, get in his spirit, get in his will, get his mind. And then as we surrender our hearts to him, as we pray, we get the mind of Christ. And now we start asking for things. Amen? Now, those who are the work, those who work the work. Now, we're going to talk about something else. This is like a, a little side journey here, because we have a teacher. Remember the father and the son. The father is the best teacher for the son. Why? Because he not only understands the equipment, he loves his son. You know, somebody else can probably teach him stuff. But they don't care, you know, they got time, whatever, you know. But his father loves his son. He's going to show him a proper way how the equipment works. He's going to show him how to work it, when to work it. He's going to do things that's for his good. Amen. And so Jesus was the teacher of his disciples, all right? He taught them everything. But Jesus said, I have to go. So who came in Jesus' place to teach us what to do with the word and in the word? Who? The Holy Spirit. Let's go there. All right. Uh, John chapter 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. So we have a comforter, we have a helper, amen, to help us, to teach us, amen, how to operate the word. See, God is showing you how the word of God will work for you. He showed you your qualifications. Now he's going to show you who's your helper. Amen? I don't know about you, but, you know, I know sometimes men like to do things by themselves, but basically it's good to have help, is it not? Amen, it is. Glory to God. Now, let's go see what Jesus said, all right? Because remember we said Jesus taught the disciples. Now, of course, those same rules and regulations and teachings are still for us today, all right? And we're taught that by the Holy Spirit. Well, let's see what Jesus taught his disciples. Let's go to Mark chapter 11, verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and, doubt, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have what he says. So now we're talking about something. We're talking about believing. But now we're talking about things that can hinder you, that weaken your faith. One thing that can weaken your faith is doubt. All right? So he's teaching you. You know, y'all guys, you know, y'all do good. But, you know, in some things you are doubting. That's why you got good results in these areas. But the areas that you're not getting good results in is because you have doubt. Amen? So if the word has not been working in your life, guess what? One of the reasons could be that you have doubt and you need to fix that. So then you can get the right, um, the right results. Amen. 
Check yourself. Check your spirit. Do you have faith? Do you believe or do you have doubt? They were doing things. They were casting out devils. They were laying hands on the sick. But this one, they could not. He said, you're doubting. That's why it didn't work. One of the reasons. Okay, now, Mark 5.36. Talking about what Jesus said. Because he taught his disciples how to use the word. Mark, Mark, Mark 5.36. Let's turn there. I'll give you time to turn. Now, 5.36, Mark 5.36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Amen? Remember we talked about the person who's unstable in all the ways he had faith, but then he heard something or somebody called him or he went somewhere, and then he heard a bad report, and he lost his faith. See, this person had lost their faith because of something that someone said. Jesus said, no, no, wait a minute, no, uh-uh, only believe. So guess what? When you have the word of God in your heart, you're getting ready to use that word of God, all right? And then something comes that will cause you to doubt. Remember what Jesus said, no, no, only believe. But Pastor Ray, you know what they said? No, Jesus said, only believe. Don't you know what just happened on you? Jesus said, only believe. Don't you know what just happened over here? Only believe. Don't you know what I just saw? Jesus says, only believe. He's teaching you how to use the word, only believe. And that's the way the word works. Don't let the enemy come and steal what God has for you. Amen? Glory, give God a hand clap because he's teaching you tonight. Amen. Right, this is a fresh from the throne room. Amen. All right. Matthew 24, 35. There's something else that Jesus said. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And this is something that, this is like a, a notation you can make in your notes, or this is like a um, something special where you understand how the Word of God works, okay? So as you know, the Word of God, we have things written in the Bible, which is the Word of God, amen? But it's something that's kind of hidden, but if you're a minister, you kind of know it indirectly. You can not only just use the Word of God, but you can use the words that Jesus spoke himself and get the same results. Because the words that Jesus spoke is still the word of God itself. And you can use those words of God in ministry. Amen. He says here, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Do you know that you can have the same results that Jesus has? That your words will not pass away? How does that happen, Pastor Ray? Well, use the same words that he used. You know, we all sometimes, you know, we men, we like to invent things. That's cool. That's great. But sometimes we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We just need to use what works. Amen. Don't we? <laughs> so let's just use what works. Let's just use his words. He said his words will never pass away. So we use his words. Our words will never pass away either. Amen. Because now our words are his words. His words are our words. And we get the same results. Amen. Mark eleven twenty five. This is so much. You could take just one of these and it can change your life because just one of these in one in a particular situation in your life, it can change your life. Mark eleven twenty five. It says here. And when ye stand praying, see there's something about your it's something about your stance. Listen, let me put it this way. You know, we men, we understand something. Let's say if we're, a man is challenging us, right? If a man is challenging us, right, and we have to challenge him, we have to stand right back up to him because he has force. It may be a fight. It may be something else, but he's coming forcefully at me. So if this man says, you know, I'm going to get you. <laughs> we know we got him, don't we? We know we got him. You're going to get me. What? No, you can't. 
No, you can't. So even if he says, look, he says, well, I'm going to get you. What do you do? You raise your voice higher. I'm going to get you. He says, no, I'm going to get you. You say, no, I'm going to get you. You don't back down. See, when you use the word of God, you don't back down. You stand praying with force. Be bold. Be forceful. Be confident. Stand praying the word of God, and it works. Don't let the enemy come. Oh, I don't know if it's going to. No, it's going to work. Amen. Be gone, devil. I cast you out in Jesus' name. It's going to work because God said it. I proclaim it in Jesus' name. It's going to work. Stand, praying, be confident, and the word will work for you. And the enemy will run like a dog between, like a, a dog's tail between his legs, running. That's right. He will. He will back down. Now, when the word is working, when you're doing it right. Um, I want to use, we have a master builder here, and we have, his name is Blake Anderson. I want to uh, ask him some questions. Oh, he's a great builder. Can you come up, if you don't mind? Praise God. I'm putting him on the spot. He doesn't know what I'm going to ask him. All right, so now just come into the camera so you come a little closer. Now, look, let's say if you're building, um, we won't say a house issue. Let's say you're building, on a test. let's say you're building a deck onto a house. What is it like? What is it like? What's some of the things you have to do? And take me through the process. Okay. We have to know what you're going to build. Right. So it has to be a design, mm -hmm. right? And then you start from the ground up. So you have to lay out where it's going to go, but then you got to put the foundation in, and then you build upon the foundation. Mm -hmm. yeah. What tools do you use? What's, okay. So you'll use a shovel to dig your footers mm -hmm. and to pour your concrete. You'll use a, a saw to cut the wood. Use... Uh, hammers and and um, nail guns to put it together. Yep. And then you'll often use um, screw guns to screw on the handrails. Now, depending on the deck, can you do that? Depending on the deck, can you do that by yourself? If it's small enough or close enough to the ground, yes. You can. Yes. But if it's a big deck, no. You need help. Absolutely. Now you also can build a house. So tell me. I know it's a whole lot to it, but just tell me the basics about building a house. Same process. Mm -hmm. Each step just takes longer. Each step just takes longer. Yeah. Now, can you build a house by yourself? No. You cannot? Cannot. You're an expert. Now I know you're an expert and you're excellent what you're doing. You can't build a house by yourself? Maybe a dog house. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But you cannot build a house. That's okay. By yourself? No. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. Let me ask you this. When you complete the job, how do you feel? Wonderful. Even when you, and when you're going through the process, how do you feel? Well, at times it's frustrating. At times frustrating. Yeah, you know, but oh. with every step, every step of completion, there's satisfaction. With every step of completion, there's satisfaction. Thank you. That's perfect. <laughs> Glory to God. He said, with every step, there's some frustration. With every step, there's satisfaction. He just showed you how the Word of God works. Amen. Because sometimes it is frustration, but you have to stick. To the process. He said there's a design. You start from the ground up. You start from the bottom and build. You build a foundation and you start. So with your word of God, you have a foundation in the word. And sometimes it is frustration. But guess what? You keep your faith. Amen. And when it's done, you have satisfaction. Amen. So this is what's going to happen. When you start using the word of God, first of all, you will have excitement because you have a dream of what this word of God is going to do for you. You're going to be excited. And you're going to have confidence. Why? Because you just heard in the, the word of God always works. So you have confidence on top of your excitement. But you know you're going to get it. Amen? And then peace comes because it's settled. Amen? See, he knows how to build a house. It's settled. He's done it before. So he has peace in the process, even though there may be some frustration, you know. But he has peace because he knows it's going to work. All right. He has faith to continue the process. But this is something that's so important. Everyone, I want you to listen here. When you use the word of God, there's going to be confirmation. I've learned this and it's happened over and over and over again. Something's going to happen to prove that it's going to work out for you. It could be something in the natural. 
It could be something spiritual. Well, sometimes, especially if you're a person that doesn't have faith, you're a person that's been hard for it to happen, but when you use the word of God, you just have peace. And it's unusual for you to have peace. You know what I mean? And that could be the confirmation that you have. Or it could be something like, look, you know, you just believing for a new job, you know? And then you hear that, you know, this company down here is hiring, and they're hiring a lot of people. That's confirmation. You're getting ready to get a new job. See, confirmation will come before manifestation. And then after the confirmation comes, then you have the manifestation. But it's important that you do the first three, you know, the excitement, the confidence, and the peace, and the faith. And then when you're doing it right, confirmation comes, and then manifestation comes. If you're not, if confirmation has not come, then maybe you have to wait a little bit longer, but it's not coming. Then then you have to backtrack, 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 backtrack. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I did not have faith. Maybe I'm not believing. Maybe I'm asking for something that's not God's will. You know what I mean? Maybe I was too hasty. Maybe I need to get the details. The you know, man of God prophesied. He, was, he prophesied to this woman that she's going to have, she's going to be a famous, she's going to be a famous cook. So she goes out and, you know, she goes out and she just begins to grill. She goes out, she grills ribs. She, you know, she grills steak. She grills hamburgers. And it just doesn't work. It just does not work. It won't, she's done it for four or five years. And she's just, I'm about to be bankrupt. It's just not working yet. Maybe I just need to have more faith. What's going on? You need to backtrack. The man of God said that what? You're going to be a famous cook. But did you dive into the details? See, maybe God said you're going to be a famous baker and you're going to bake cakes. And that's where your fame is going to be. See, sometimes you run into what you want before you get all the instructions. Remember what he said? He said there's a diagram. There's a design. Sometimes you need more than just one word. You know, you need more details, all right, in what God wants you to do. Amen. Oh, God wants you to be a preacher. Okay, praise God. I'm quitting my job because God said it, you know. Okay. But do you go to the details? God may have said you're going to be a preacher, but he may not say it. Not now. Wait until he calls you. It may be two or three months or two or three years where you have to step into it. Amen? So you win the word. Well, you have to check it out. Amen? Dive in. Get more details. All right? So remember, excitement, confidence, peace, faith. Then confirmation. When you've done it right, there's going to be some confirmation. Amen? Sometimes you just make the phrase, look, God. I believe, have I done everything right? God, I know you're going to do it, but have I? And you say, yes, son. You don't have to do anything else. That's confirmation. You're doing it right. And then comes a manifestation. And the manifestation is beautiful and it's sweet. Amen. (laughs) It is wonderful. That's when it's working. So I'm going to share with you some things that how the word works and what it does. Because remember, you want to use appropriately the word of God, amen, in your life, okay? All right. The word of God is a discerner. Because some of you need discernment in your life, amen? You can't go by how everything looks, all right, or by what people say all the time. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It is a discerner. Because I want to share something with you. The word of God is working all over. It's working. See, like, put it this way. The young lady talked about coming to the house of prayer ministries and getting the word of God, right? Because it's working. So the word of God can be working all over, but are you receiving it? You need the word of God to work in your life. Amen? And so so you have to check some things out. It says here, Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See, if you really don't know what's going on, go to the Word of God, and it will show you what is the truth of the matter. Amen? Sometimes we have to go to the Word of God and find out the truth of the matter even in ourselves because we don't know. Amen? Glory to God. Now, we'll do these quickly. All right. 2 Timothy 3.16. Many of you already know what it says. The word of God is a teacher. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. 
The word is a teacher. Amen. So if you need some learning, something you need to go to the word of God. Amen. And like I said, some people, like I said, they're un, they're not skillful, right, just yet. We'll talk about that a little bit. So they'll go to their pastor or they'll go to their parents or someone skillful. But still, that should be a temporary situation. You don't have to go there like every day or every week or every month or like whatever. You should be able to stand on your own two feet and be taught by the word of God yourself. Amen. And sometimes if you're taught, you will go back to your pastor or to your mom or your dad or whatever and say, this is what I read. This is what I heard. And you share it with them and say, well, yes, yes, son, you got it right. You know, or yes, son, you're right. But still, there's a little bit more you need to understand. And so going back and, you know, with someone's more skillful, say, oh, you're right. You're right. I missed that because when you start reading the word of God, you start, you know, you can start fantasizing. But, you know, you need to just read the word of God for what each word says. All right. And when you read the gospel, each word says, then you will get a better understanding. Because sometimes if you've been in a church for a long time, you'll read a scripture and you remember what the pastor said or the evangelist said or whatever. And you go by that and see you're missing so much when God will teach you himself. Amen. All right. Ephesians chapter six, verse 17. God wants this church for everyone here to be the most blessed person in the whole wide world. I'm telling you, that's what he wants. Glory to God. All right. Ephesians 6, 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. See, the word is a weapon. You want to rebuke the enemy. You want to get rid of the enemy of your life. Use the word of God. Oh, you just start swinging. Oh, you're mad at the enemy. You just start swinging. Oh, you start throwing a tantrum, you know. Or da, 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 da. No, that's not going to work. It's not going to work against the enemy. He don't care. He starts laughing if you throw in a tantrum. No, use the word of God, and he will go. He will step. He will jump out of your life. Amen. He will jump out of your life when you use the word of God. The word of God is a weapon. Use the weapons that God has given you. Amen. Glory to God. Okay, this is this is so important here. Uh, Luke chapter eight, verse eleven. Because you have to understand how the word works, okay? It's one of the reasons why we had the master builder come up. So, Luke 8, 11 says, now this parable is this. The seed is the word of God. See, sometimes the word of God is sown. Have you ladies ever, so, uh, you know, put corn in the ground or flowers in the ground or whatever, you know? Does it take time? So sometimes when the word of God is sown, it takes time for that word of God to prosper. Amen. So if you put the word of God in and say, well, I've, I've waited two days or two, three weeks. or what's to happen? Sometimes it takes the word of God to manifest. Sometimes it takes time depending on what it is. Remember? So what do we say? Just keep your keep your excitement. Keep your faith. Be at peace. Amen. Because guess what? If you do it right confirmation is going to happen. You're going to be confirmed that you did it the right way. So now it just means just wait. God can just say, it's going to work. Just wait. That's your confirmation. And so you just wait on the process. You planted something in the ground. It's going to work. Amen. Just wait for it to prosper. Wait for it to work. Wait for it to manifest. Because see, some people, they lose their faith in this period of time. You know, and, you know, they lose their faith. Amen. Because of waiting. But see, then you didn't lose your faith when you planted that corn. You didn't lose your faith when you planted the um, the okra or whatever, because you knew it took time. Why are you more skillful in natural things than you are in spiritual things? Don't you understand that it always works? See, if you understand the word always works, amen, now you need to go on the journey how it's going to work for you. And when you plant something, give it time to grow. I want to take a side journey, okay? Remember when we said this. Remember that you have to be a believer, right? And you have to be believing for the word to work. Amen? Let's say this person just, um, let's say a person comes they want a blessing. All right? Let's say they prayed, they came to the altar, and they got this done. They came to the altar, they got this done. They came to the altar and got they got three things done. And then they're coming again for the man or woman that got to pray, right? Because it's working. I don't blame them. If I knew someone and, I, and every time they prayed for me, it came to pass, I'd go to them too. That's smart, wouldn't you? 
Glory to God. I have a long list of what you can pray for me for. Amen. Because I know it's going to work when you pray. So that's cool. That's good. I mean, that's good to go to the preacher to pray, to the prophet, to the pastor. That's really good. God wants you to. But guess what? <clears throat> Let's say one of the things they got was a wonderful business. So another thing they got was a wonderful job. All right. So now they got money. All right. From the job. And then they got money from their business. OK. Enemy comes in and say, look, you know, you've been wanting to take a vacation for a long time. You know, it doesn't want to take two thousand dollars to go on this vacation. You know, you got it in the bank. But, you know, but the wife says to the husband, but well, we can't pay our tithes. Well, that's OK. We, we won't pay our tithes before. We just been paying our tithes two or three months. It don't matter if we just stop now. We start back later, you know, or what? Or something else, you know. Their business is working really, really well. Amen. They went to the altar, and God now God is blessing their business because man and woman got to pray, right? They're not tithing off their business, okay? And then things begin to happen, all right. You know, the business doesn't work anymore. Now they're having problems on the job. Now they go on vacation. Things are not working. Now the car breaks down, all right? And guess what they do? They come to the altar. Pastor Ray, Pastor Alice, pray for me because things are happening at work. Things are happening in my business. You know, it's a devil. You know, we got to rebuke the devil out of this situation, you know, because, you know, I'm a Christian. You know, I'm we you know we know we love God. All right. And they pray because they say, OK, we'll pray for you. And then nothing happens. Well, the man of God, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? You know, they go back again. See, the thing, why did not the word work? Because there's sin or disobedience in your life. Amen. Are you being obedient to the things of God? Are you being faithful to your calling? Is there a sin in your life? There's no one. Is there unforgiveness in your life? Amen. There's cause in the word of God. Remember now, you know, because sometimes, you know, you know, they're new and like there's things they've been wanting to do for a long time and now they can do it. And you can do those things, but you have to do it at the right time. Amen. You know, now, you know, you can't give God an offering. You bought this new suit. You bought this new dress, you know. You now you bought all this new stuff, you know, and you just can't give them. Because God wanted you to give $100. You only got $5 left off your spending. Your, 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 you know, you went shopping. You know, you had $300. God, he's going to want to give you 100 but now you only got 5 You just had a good time, you know. <laughs> Remember what God said? You have robbed me in tithes and offerings. Amen. Now, see, this is something that the preacher does not know, not unless God reveals it. This is something. This is, this is between you and God. You know, it's between you and God. It's not between you and the preacher. It's between you and God. And God sees what's going on in your life. Because the preacher can only do what God allows. The preacher can pray. The pastor can pray or whatever. And pray in faith because they love you. But if God doesn't do it, it won't get done. It's just the way it is. So you have to check yourself. Amen. All right, is that the side journey okay? Because we're showing you why the word may not be working in your life. Amen. You have to be mature. You have to grow up. The enemy, you know, anytime the enemy comes to you and starts talking to you, that's a signal right in there. <laughs> danger, danger, danger. The enemy's coming to you. Anything that you've been taught in the word of God, anything your pastor's taught to you by faith or whatever, and now he's saying something alter, alter to that. Warning signs, warning signs, warning signs. You know, you've been taught, Bible says, pay your tithes. Someone said, you don't have to pay your tithes. That's in the um, Old Testament. Warning, warning, warning. You know, you know what I mean? God has blessed you with a business, you know. He's giving you extra. Well, I don't have to pay you with the extra, do I? Warning, warning, warning. You should understand when the enemy's talking to your mind. Amen. Glory to God. So. Let's go to Psalms 107.20. We're talking about the Word of God because God wants you to be an expert in how the Word of God works. So your life can flourish. So you can be a sign and a wonder. Amen? Now, the Word can be, we talked about the Word can be sown. The Word can also be sent. It says, Psalm 107 verse 20 says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their instructions. We have sent the word of God many times and God has done amazing things. So this is this is kind of beautiful because, you know, some people have so much doubt. And I've said this before in um, and I would say doubt. Why, why do they have doubt? Because they've never seen it happen before. And that's why they have doubt. 
You know, they don't just go by the word of God for face value. They go by their experiences or go by what they said. See, if they heard someone, if they heard the word work for someone, they can believe it. But if it's a word they've never seen or heard it work, then they have doubt. You know what I mean? So, so it says they sit their word and heal them, deliver them from all their instructions. Sometimes when you don't see, it's even better. We have some uh, calls that we do. Uh, we have a television broadcast that people call in, you know, for their healing. All right. And some of the ladies, they don't even expect the healing. They just want prayer because their prayer is good. It makes them feel better. They don't get what they want, but they just want prayer. And so we had, I think, can I share this story with y'all? Some of y'all heard it before. Okay. So anyway, we had this lady. She's an older lady. And um, I had to pray for her. And sometimes older ladies, like, you know, really, you know, really strong, which is good. So anyway, they had a problem. I said, well, uh, I believe it was their ankle. They just had surgery, and they had their ankle was bothering them. They wanted prayer. They also wanted prayer for the finances, prayer for family issues, sort of thing. So I said, okay, we'll take one at a time. Let's pray for your ankle. I said, okay. I said, okay. So she prayed. I said, well, let's test the ankle. You know, how's your ankle feel? She said, well, you already, I already told you my ankle was hurting. <laughs> Jesus, I already told you that. Don't you know how my... <laughs> Don't you know, Michael? I already told you that. I said, well, let's pray one more time, okay? So we prayed for it again, all right? And I said, now, please, can you stand up on your ankle and see how it feels, all right? And she said, and you know, I hear it on the phone, she said, ah, 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 ah. And she said, for about three or four minutes, ah, well, kiss my foot. I feel great. I feel great. <laughs> Amen. You know, <laughs> and the word worked because she didn't really, she really, didn't, the doubt just, she was, her mind was on something else. And so it just worked. Amen. She didn't have to say no. But even though she was doing, she was, mind was on something else, it worked. And we find out so many times because what happens is this, you know, if I, if, if she would have saw me, you know, she's an older lady, she would have said, well, look, the man praying, oh, he don't have a suit on. I don't know about if he's anointed. He don't have a suit on. You know, oh, his pants are wrinkled. I don't know, man. You know, what's going on with him? You know what I'm saying? No, no. So they see. So she didn't see me. She just heard my word. Amen. So she didn't have anything to doubt. And sometimes when you don't see, do you have more faith. Amen. So you need to go by what? By your faith and not by your sight. Amen. And you will get greater results. Amen. That's a true story. No. And then we pray for the other things too. And she had, and I said, wow, it's because that happened, she had great faith for the other things. Now, um, okay, the word also is what? Spoken. All right. Matthew 8 8. Matthew 8 8. It says, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Amen? Speak the word only. That's great faith. You can speak the word. See, you don't have to be right there. You don't have to be the person who has to be right there in front of you. You can speak the word, and the word will find that person. Amen? It will find. You don't have to know what state they're in or what location. The word will find that person. It's good to know their name, their last name. Name is, you know, da 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 da. Okay, you speak the word. You don't have to worry about. You don't have to find their address, their telephone. No, the word will find that person. Amen. The word, so the word is spoken. Matthew seven verse twenty-five. And this is really good. The word is a foundation. It is a rock. Matthew 7, 25 reads, And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded on a rock. What is your life founded on? Is your, is your life founded on the word of God? Or is your life founded on what you read in the newspaper? Or what you saw on the internet? Or what you learned? You know, sometimes what you learn in school is good. Sometimes it's not. And see, sometimes even if you can learn something that's good, you know, it changes. But the word of God does not change. So what is, you know, because something may have worked for you, but it won't work for your children. You know, the advice that you give your children may not be the same as it worked for you. 
But if you're talking about the word of God, then it will work. Amen. Because it will be a rock. It will be foundational. All right. The word is also a God. 119, 105. Psalm 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. The word is a guide. You don't know what to do. You know where to go. Read the word of God. It will show you. The word is a judge. See, you know, people say, oh, you're judging. You're ju I'm not judging anything. The word of God says this. The word of God is a judge. That's what the word of God says. So do, so if you meet those requirements, what's going to happen? The word of God, or, if, you know, depending on what it is. We know this. We know that the Bible talks about unbelievers will have their part in the lake of fire. We know that. That's what the word of God says. You're going to say, so you can read the scriptures. Oh, you're a judge. You're a judge. You're a judge. I'm not judging anything. I'm just reading the word of God. The word of God, the word is the judge. Amen. We all had to come to salvation. We all were sinners. Just like we were preaching to someone else or teaching or, or giving them a word or, or, um, or witnessing, that same witness had to come to us first. Amen. They just had that defense mechanism. Say, listen, listen, brother, listen, sister. You think I'm coming to get you, but I had to do the same thing. I was a sinner. You know, I had to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Because if I didn't, then I would have my part in the lake of fire. So you and my were the same, at least, you know, in what, you know, in time past. So I'm just sharing with you what God shared with me. So you got the same benefit. I'm not judging you, brother. I was in the same boat. So the word is a judge. John 12, 48, it says here, He that rejecteth me and the words and receiveth not my words hath one judgment in him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. There's going to be a great white throne judgment. Did you receive my son as my Lord and Savior? Because if you didn't, there's only one place for you, and that is the lake of fire. The word would judge that person. But if we have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, then we are entered into his kingdom forever. The word is truth. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. The word is life. Matthew 4, 4, it reads. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. We live by his word. You know, like natural, we live by food and water. In the spirit, we live by the word of God. Amen. Last verse. The word is living. John 6, 63. John verse 6. Excuse me, John chapter 6, verse 63. It is a spirit that quickeneth, and Jesus is speaking. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The word is living. You know, as we have been, we've been so prosperous here. You know, God has blessed me and my wife and my family for tremendous blessing. And of course we were in churches and we were elders or working as ushers or doing something. But God has tremendous, tremendously blessed us and we overcame many things. Of course we went through many things, but we overcame many, many things. And then God called us into the ministry because one, because we were faithful, but also because you could enter into the same blessings. Remember what I said before, you know, it's a goal that I have, but it's also God's goal that every area of your life can be blessed. Your marriages can be blessed. Your parenting can be blessed. If you have a career in industry or you have a career in business, whatever your business is going to be blessed. Your career choices can be blessed. Your relationships can be blessed. Your health can be blessed. All right. I mean, your finances can be blessed. Your relationship with God can be blessed that you know who Jesus is and have your own relational own relationship with him. You know, if you're in ministry, you can operate in this power, operate in this anointing, operate in this wisdom, that things happen in your ministry, and you know, and his will is done in your life. Amen. There's no area that God cannot bless in your life, and that is what he has for you.
But one of the things you will need to be a skillful operator of the word of God. Amen. Everyone stand. This first call is for anyone who's not saved. And you're going to say, well, Pastor Ray, don't you know we're saved? Well, that's the first call. And it could be people in the internet audience. If you are not saved or if you're not in right standing with God, just come to the altar quickly. That's going to be the first call, salvation. Come on up. So if you're not saved, what does it mean? It means that you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you walked away from him after you received him. All right. So we're going to pray for those on the internet audience. And you say, it could be two or three months later because of how you can see things on the video. It doesn't matter. If you hear this on video, the time is still real in your life, and it still can happen. So just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, and you're the only way that I can be saved. I believe you died and rose from the dead on the third day. And now you're seated on the right hand of the Father. Lord Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life and make me whole. If you have prayed that prayer, send us a note so we can pray with you more because we want to connect with you. Because even after the joy that you have right now, there is a journey that you need to take. But God bless you because you just made the greatest decision that you could ever make. Is that, is that true? That's the greatest decision that you could ever make. Now, prayer requests. Is there anyone that needs prayer? Just come, let's see. Come to the altar. Amen. You believe that God can do this for you? Well, be it unto you, it's your faith to say it. I'm just going to touch you right now, and it's going to clear up. Mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just rebuke. We rebuke that red eye. We rebuke the bursting, mm -hmm. even a blood vessel. We, we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the blood vessel will be mended in Jesus' name. And I even see the eye. Uh, the redness dissipating right now. In Jesus' name. It's done, my son. In Jesus' name. Do you receive that? It's done. It's done. It's done. God bless you. Is there anyone else that needs prayer?
In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. God bless you. Pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that anointings upon my life will now come upon his life. And I pray, Father, for power. I pray for the miraculous. And I pray for provision, that it will not want for any good thing. And as provision comes, let it overflow into prosperity. I command it to come forth in Jesus' name. I pray that all the children will be healthy. And men and women of God, that you will bless the seed from generation to generation to generation. I command it to come forth. And the enemy cannot hinder what God has done today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you receive that? It's done. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. Um, I'm mean, so Let's pray in tongues for a little bit. See what else God is doing. Many of you have sown the word and took time for it to grow. But now the word is coming forth. I see a great harvest coming. Okay, I see a great harvest coming to this church 
and to those who have sown the word. This is a precious time for Lord. You see, sometimes people don't understand what goes on because they just see somebody blessed, see somebody rejoicing, but they don't see the heart of the blesser. You know, they don't see the they don't see the Father, they don't see the Son. You know, they just don't they just don't see it. But the Lord is so happy with many of you because you have lived for Him and you've paid the price. And you stood the test of time. If you could see the joy of the Father and the joy of the Son, you would never doubt again. I just see that. He's so happy and it's coming and it's getting ready to manifest. Well, you could say, Well, I know it's getting ready to manifest. I knew I we knew that a long time, but I'm just telling you, you don't know the joy of the Father. If you knew the joy of the Father, it would change your life, it would change you. It really would, because it's not just you, it's him too. He's in it with you. You think he's just in heaven, just, you know, watching? No, he is in it with you. I mean, he's intimately in your walk, where he feels and knows and walks and all. He's just not sitting on the throne with his feet crossed. No, he feels like you feel. And he smiles, and he's so happy. There's something that people don't understand. Some people don't understand. They don't understand how to receive. They don't understand what it takes. They don't understand what um, what it means, what it takes to get what you believe God for. I want to tell you what it takes. It takes everything. You can't leave anything behind. You can't keep anything for yourself. It takes everything that you have to enter into the goodness of God. You say, well, I can give 90%. Or 95%. Or, you know, I can do stuff. Or I'll be I'll be good, but my family, and I'm not going to involve my family. No, we have to involve our family. We have to involve our children. You know, they don't have to be ministers, but they have to be taught the word of God. Amen? You can't just serve God in a corner. It's just you. Or just you and your wife, but not your children. No. Or it's just, you know, or we do it when we go to church. or not your job. No. It's everything that you have. Because he gave everything that he had. And when you do that, it's painful. It can be frustrating. It can be hard. And other people don't understand you. And why is it not working? But you don't understand his heart. If you're having a hard time with what I'm saying right now, go back to the message of last week. Love unconditional. And you can understand the heart of the Father and the heart of the Son and where he's taking you. Because there's a price. He would be cheating you if you did not pay the price to get to what he has for you right now. So, God's not going to give you a time or a day. I know it's what you want. Oh, tell me, I want it. Tell me today, or tell me exactly the day. He's not going to do that today. But what he is going to do. He's going to seal you in his goodness. That from this day point, this day forth, the goodness of God will not leave your life. Do you believe that? He's going to seal you in his goodness. So if you believe that it's for you, take a step of faith and come to the altar. He's going to seal you in his goodness. It's good not to be an orphan. It's good not to be left alone. It's good to have a good father. I mean, a good father. Sometimes you can have a father, a good father who understands to seal you in his goodness. Wow. And it means so many different things for so many different people. But I pray that you have an understanding of what God means. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I lay my hands, as I just touched them for a moment, you said that you would seal them in your goodness. I pray, Father, from this day forth that your goodness will never leave their life. I even pray, Father, that the goodness of the, the goodness that's already in their lives will begin to expand in such a way they will be a sign and a wonder to so many. I pray, Father, that enemy will not be able to touch the goodness. We know that there will be 
trials and tribulations. We know that when you, you go do good things for them, we know they'll be persecuted. But it will not stop the goodness of God in their life. And as much as they go through the goodness, will even expand and expand and expand from this day forth. If you believe it, this word will not fail you. In Jesus' name, from this day forth, the goodness of God bestowed upon this man of God. From this day forth, the goodness of God will come upon this daughter of God. You've sacrificed so much, he says. But the goodness of God will never leave your life from this day forth. The goodness of God. He's calling you queen, my queen. The goodness of God will never leave your life from this day forth. The goodness of God bestowed upon you from this day forth will never leave your life. In Jesus' name, man of God, the goodness of God from this day forth, I decree and declare, it will never leave your life. In Jesus' name. The goodness of God, this wonderful couple, it will never leave our life from this day forth. I know, do you believe it? It will never leave your life. The goodness of God, man of God, from this day forth, will never leave your life. In Jesus' name. This master builder, man of God, the goodness of God will never leave your life or your line, your family line, from generation to generation to generation. It will never leave. In Jesus' name, the goodness of God will never leave. My daughter, sometimes you feel fragile, but he calls you strong. The goodness of God will never leave your life from this day forth. Do you believe that? Amen. Another wonderful daughter, the goodness of God will never leave your life. Amen. The goodness of God will never leave your life from this day forth. Regardless what they try to say or do, it seal us upon you from this day forth. In Jesus' name. Praise God. The goodness of God, man of God, will never leave your life or your line from this day forth. Be strong. Don't worry about persecution, but the goodness of God will expand again and again and again. The goodness of God will not leave your life. He says it will never leave your life, my daughter. From this day forth, my seal is upon you. My seal is upon your daughter and those to come in Jesus' name. The goodness of God, he's saying, son, when from this day forth, will never leave your life again. Just believe. Don't worry about if there's persecution. It's okay. You persecuted Jesus. But the goodness of God would expand. Continue upon your life from this day forth. The goodness of God, my daughter, who cried for the children. You see, when you cried, you cried for me. You cried for me. The ignorance and disdain and all the things that were going on. So you ministered unto the Lord. The goodness of God will come and not leave your life. In Jesus' name, whatever. The goodness of God will descend upon you right now and not leave your life from this day forth. Just believe that he will not leave. In Jesus' name, my daughter, the goodness of God from this day forth will even expand and it will never leave your life you have much to experience and much to live and much to laugh about. For the goodness of God would expand to your joy forevermore in Jesus' name. The things that Jesus died for, for on the cross, he's so happy when you can receive what he's done for. It's a beautiful moment. This is a heavenly moment right now. 
if you feel it's a heavenly moment, just give God a praise and, and just thank him. Just thank him. Thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you did not forget about us. And thank you that you included us in your vision for what you wanted for your church and for your body. And thank you, Father, for giving your son. We're going to adjourn right now. For God has given and no wise let the enemy take because it's up to you. But the goodness will never leave your life. Let the light of heaven come upon you and be your countenance. Let mercy and truth be among your dwelling forevermore. And let you be the image of God's Son now and forever. Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Everyone hugs someone. This is a time of love, the love of God. The shed a brawl in this place. That's right. Everyone hugs someone. And you on the internet audience hug someone.